Hello and welcome to another edition of Theory Craft, hosted by myself, Ben. Him over there is Jack, and our furry little friend, who's a bit unsure whether or why or not he's here, is Boris. Boris Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, is our latest mascot. He we doesn't have, he doesn't have a choice in this relationship at all. <laughs> no, of course not. We saved him from the gulag in Russia. But yes, today is my topic of a very unique and a very odd and obscure sci-fi series that lasted for about five seasons in America called the, in America called Quantum Leap. Now, for those who have never seen it, the general gist is that the year is 1999. For whatever reason, all of the big sci-fi stuff was towards the end of the 1900s. But the year is 1999. Sam Beckett has formed a theory on how to time travel via the use of quantum leaping. But instead of interfering in time in himself, he jumps inside the bodies of random people to fix mistakes in time, and it goes from there. So, what do you have to say about this today, Boris? Welcome to Theorycraft, peasants. Boris, come on now. Everyone loves this series. This is why we're here. Listen, look, look, we have an audience out there, okay? Look, you have to be kind, you have to be nice. Say something else, say something nice. Shut up, you insolent swine. Why yeah. you shut up? I'm afraid, folks, we're having a slight issues with Boris at the moment. He's still getting to like us. Yeah, he's been threatened with the tomba dryer and the washing machine torture devices so far via Jack. Otherwise, if you... Don't say anything nice, or unless you don't keep your mouth shut, I will make you vape this for 10 minutes straight till your lungs build a capacity that you'll be able to rise to Neptune. But there we go. <laughs> so yes, Quantum Leap in itself is a very bizarre concept in certain terms of time travel, because for the most part, time travel has been that you literally just appear in the random time period wherever it is that you are, as who you are, and that's about it. Yeah. There have been some series or some films that have come up with its own rules, such as Time Cop, for instance. I could not understand the logic that you weren't allowed to touch your past self and somehow you merge into this fleshy, gooey thing that then eradicates you from time and space as a whole. Well, If that was the case, why couldn't they have just got Adolf Hitler to his baby Adolf Hitler, and then there would have been Adolf Hitler at all. Yikes, I think Deadpool already played with that one, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there is that too. But yeah. this is the... This is the thing I love about time travel series. For me, this is my like big love for sci-fi, is the many intricacies that people come up with in terms of logic for time travel. Well, I think well, just with the thing is, like when I was watching, well, I was watching World Culture, a World Culture video all about time travel. Like if you've never seen like World Culture movies, like I haven't watched it; they're really good. But uh, yeah, we was talking about time travel. Like even multiple directors and such will agree that time travel is one of the coolest ideas, but is one of the hardest to explain properly in films and series because every kind of different series and such has their own rules, but it's very difficult to do right. Yes. I mean, the biggest one of all with Quantum Leap was that it was a fixed amount of time, if that makes sense. So the the concept played on the idea that he could only time travel within his own lifetime. It was between the year 1953 from the day he was born yeah. up until the modern day for where it was set in the TV series in 1999, which was quite an interesting idea. But then it also leaves things a bit ambiguous i suppose because although there has been a lot of changes throughout each decade it's not an awful lot of time travel per se like it's only about 40 years worth of time travel yeah which well in the grand scheme of things this isn't really a lot i mean what do you have like, no because well at the time quantum leap was being made it was pretty much what did you have like in between that you had like the 60s up to the 90s well it was 1989 was when the series began, so I mean, there was quite a lot of historic moments, such as the Black Rights Movement, there was perhaps a lot of big things in America. Like JFK as well. 
Well, that is one of the episodes that I find the most interesting of all, that they got away with it. It was a two-parter episode, and he jumped into the body of Lee Harvey Oswald. And it was such... But it, thinking back, it seemed like such a big thing. I think it was such a bizarre concept that some people may have written in to try and cancel the show because of it being so controversial, I suppose. And now we're in the year 2020 and we live in the world of cancel culture now because you can't say anything or do anything. <laughs> no, this is true. But then it's like I thought to myself, if we were to have Quantum Leap in modern day, for 40 years worth of like time travel, that would include 9-11, all of the like Iraqi war stuff, terrorist stuff. And I can't really think of much else that's been big enough for the past 30 well, to 40 years. Well, you've had things like, I think it was in, I might be going, might be going a bit off track, but I don't think I am. But there's also different things such as the, uh, the Berlin Wall as well. I and think that also, was back in the, in the 80s. In the 80s, you had this assassination of John Lennon. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, that could be an interesting thing to try and bring into modern day as well. So mind you, with the concept of quantum leap, which I'd really love for if you could explain like this a little, if you could explain this a little bit more, uh, what is the kind of the main uh, premise, just so everybody understands, of like jumping into another person's uh, body, so to speak, or consciousness? Well, it was a very loosely based idea in the series that they basically transported the mind of Sam Beckett through time and it would then, it didn't really quantify a reason as to why he would pick certain people, it was just that he would be in the body of a certain someone that was related to an incident in time that they think could be corrected via the computer system known as Ziggy. Now, I love the fact that they call it Ziggy, <laughs> and I, well, I wonder if they called it Ziggy in reference to David Bowie's alternative name, which was Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I will show you the control system that they had, which the oh, second main this. character, well, Al was a really interesting character, because the first few episodes... Like, they would show him leaving off screen. You would hear, like, a random door go click or whatever and then he'd walk through it but obviously through sam's perspective perspective and everyone else's as the audience you wouldn't see it because it was out of like the whole like viewing thing of how yeah. you see out but the whole idea of the actual controller was ziggy and to me i think it looks like a load of lego bricks with leds that pretty much is what it is i mean it's it does make me laugh, though. Like, this is kind of spooky in a way, because the size of that would be technically a handheld mobile phone to us today. But considering this was back in the year 1989, when mobile phones had only just come in, give or take, if you think about it, like the massive great big well, cell yeah, phones. Do you remember they used to be like bricks back then? <laughs> Well, they were. They were literally called bricks because they were the size of bricks and they would last three days before the battery charge went, I think. Oh, I think it was the um, the original ones. You had like you had to charge them for 24 hours just to yes. talk on them for 30 minutes. Yes. But, yeah, it was a very weird concept that they mind-swapped with certain people because... Not only did they just mind swap like other men, they also swapped with women. In total in the series, which only lasted about five seasons, he swapped with nine different women. One of which, if not two, I believe were teenage girls, and at least one of them was pregnant. And they it was a really odd one because in the entire episode, they were like on the cusp of her giving birth, but of course it was like well, what would happen? Would the baby still exist? Would it, like, what would happen? And at the very end of the episode, he's just, a, he's literally just jumping into the next person as he's just to have contractions, and then they swap. So it's just like, <laughs> ah! But it's one of those things where sci-fi, 
I feel like with recent sci-fi, it doesn't push the envelope enough in terms of like randomness or like just sheer logic of their own sci-fi. Like they try too hard to make it realistic and not actually try to make fiction, which is the whole point of sci-fi. Well, yeah, I mean, just like when you um, like when you have to mess with things like time travel, it's just if you work on like kind of the concept too much, obviously, some work does have to go into it in order for it to make any sort of remnants of sense. But there's always going to be, well, more plot holes than Swiss cheats. So, yeah, funny, get to use a catchphrase. Um, but um, when it but when it comes to that, like it seems to be with like Quantum Leap, it seems to be one of the only times that I've seen like time travel kind of done well because it's kind of. It's kind of like almost made itself in a way, if you like. But then yeah. I remember when we were speaking about, you know, with the whole thing such as the Har- like Lee Harvey Oswald, the guy who shot JMK. Um, if that may- like, does that kind of relate to, as in the butterfly effect? So if like one circumstance happens, maybe um, on this side of the world, will it affect something else later down the line? That sort of thing. It's just I was struggling to grasp at first the concept of doing it at all to be honest well that's how ziggy comes into effect is that they analyze potential ideas of how they can fix the timeline and it's it's a bit of an odd one because it's very rarely where you get time travel that has like the awareness that things have changed in real time if that makes sense yeah sure yeah because obviously with Al being in like the far flung future compared to when Sam is, depending on what year he's gone to, it's all that potential future. It's sort of all these little things that they try to analyze before they correct stuff. Yeah. But the one other thing that I did like is that there was a lot of ethical stuff in terms of what they could and should do as well as what they should and shouldn't do. Because uh, yeah. One big thing was there was a running joke with the side character, Al, the fact that he was remarried about four times because he lost his first wife because she thought he died in the Vietnam War. So he didn't, obviously. He was a prisoner of war, but she thought he died in Vietnam. And so she remarried. And because of legal reasons and because time had passed so long, she didn't really love him as much as she did originally. And he had to move on. But, of course, he couldn't let go of the previous woman because it's just the way things are. So over the years, he tries to remarry and he ends up fudging it up because he's too obsessed with the first woman that he wanted to be with. So one of the episodes is that that Sam goes back in time to literally the day before Al's wife finds out that supposedly Al died in the Vietnam War. So yeah. he tries to intervene with the whole scheme of things and trying to tell Sam to like keep an eye on this mystery woman, like make sure she doesn't get this letter, and spends like a good two thirds of the episode explaining like you you just have to keep an eye on her. Like Ziggy's not sure, but you just have to keep an eye on her and just like refrain from her getting any bad news. It gets to, like the last part of the um, episode where. Al's been found out by the people that run the facility. He's been detained because he's gone against the like actual programming. Yeah. For like 24 hours. And basically, someone else comes in instead. I can't remember who. It's some random person that they use instead and says, like, no, it's meant to be this. You're meant to fix this. And with like minutes to spare, Sam literally jumps in traffic, saves the person's life, and then he jumps to the next thing. And it's like, so. Ethically, we can time travel, but we shouldn't alter our own personal history. But then come to the end of this series in Series 5, it's quite bittersweet that when Sam realises he actually has control of where he can go, where and how, and actually jumps in inside his own body, he goes back to that day, to the moment where Al's wife is crying in the bar after finding out that Al's died, and tells her to wait for him because he's not dead. And that's it. But it was supposed to have led into another season, which is going to be really interesting because it was meant to have had Al jump into the Quantum Leap machine to find Sam because Sam goes missing. Yeah. 
but it, they actually had stills of I saw some of the stills of it the other day where he's actually like he's grown up, he's got his wife, he's got four daughters, he's got his like happy ending, but he's still a bit unsure because obviously Sam's his best friend. He needs to find out what happened to Sam because he it's a weird episode. Like he jumps inside his own body on his birthday because the day that it is in that in the future is his actual birthday, but he actually jumps inside his own body on the day of his birthday. Wait, so, so does he jump into a younger or older version of himself? The day, that day, exactly. Wait, so is it like a few hours old then? Or... Well, it's. I think it's the day where it is set in like the present day, content, like within the TV series, so whatever it is in 1999. Right. So he literally jumps inside that version of him. Because like I say, it's only his mind that goes through time. It's not his whole body. Yeah, it's just his consciousness. I yeah, guess so his, his consciousness goes inside his own body in the lab. And thus he's able to take his body and him, all of him at once to time travel into a random bar. And he meets oh. like random people that he's met, that he's helped over the time quantum leaping. I did but, that. I did manage to find that episode, and I did watch it, and it's... he ends up meeting, well, God. Yeah, so they don't specifically say it in the episode, but they do say it as a fandom that it's actually God at the bar. But I always wondered whether or not it'd be a version of him from the future that's jumped into this random guy and knows the steps forward going from there. But yeah. like I say, because now he's got control over his whole body, I suppose that's not true. Uh, it, it kind of generates a few more questions than yeah. the answers. But the other weird thing is that he does actually jump inside his own body as a kid. Like There are, I think, three episodes where he jumps into his younger self. Which, again, is a bit odd. Because if you had like the whole knowledge that you have now as a grown-up, but you went back to when you were like, barely a teenager, that would be really screwy. Wait a minute, so... Yeah, because obviously, like as you grow, you mature, your mind changes. So you exactly. have basic. Oh, your consciousness! Oh my God, your consciousness inside of your child's inside of you is. Oh my God! That yeah, is ex exactly. That is, that is exactly. Horrifying. But the one thing I will say that I find is quite a like funny thing when it comes to typical Americanness is that whenever it comes to someone that's like stupidly smart. They always seem to have a hometown in either Ohio or one of those like farmy towns. Of course. And why, I, why is it? Why is it? I think it's that? just to humanize it in the terms of that greatness doesn't come from being in like a well off family. You have to hard work your way up through life, which is a good aesthetic to come to. But at the same point, it comes to a very overly done stereotype. I suppose so, yeah. I mean, they use it for young Sheldon, and yes, it's kind of funny, but then it just, it falls a bit flat, and I think it's just mostly because we're British, and we're Devonshire, well, oh, he's Devonshire, he's from Reading, he's, he's a, a um, bloody northerner. I'm not a uh, man. man. Yeah, he, he's, a, <laughs> he's northern, but um, who are our Moving on, I'm from... Get your I teeth in, boy. Morris. Put your teeth in. Put your teeth um, in, boy. I'm from Belgium, like one of these one of these posh boys, you know? <laughs> yes. You know, hence anyway. The reason, hence the reason the video is always dreaming of doing something like this. But yeah, anyway, with the other question which I wanted to sort of go into with uh, with Quantum Leap, it's just, it is definitely the most interesting like time travel series which I've ever watched. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, with the whole time travel thing, I think you kind of cleared this up for me a little while back. There isn't the whole time traveling scheme with like these two actually like a government funded program, isn't it? Supposedly, yes. I mean, they don't specifically outright it, but Al is meant to be either a general or an admiral of some kind because there have been episodes where he wears a, wears a white naval suit that's got all the like badges or whatever and it's a very interesting one because there were a few episodes dedicated to the idea of evil leapers so there was these people that literally copied the same concept of time travel but they went back in time to make mistakes to alter time for their own goods right yeah 
it's a very old one and it's but it's typical american style that it was the when sam leaped it was a blue aura so blue meant good when the bad one came along it was red like it was red bzz, bzz, bzz. but the thing is with both the leapers they both suffered amnesia for whatever reason they just couldn't remember who they were it may have been like some sort of side effect of the actual time travel itself and over the episode obviously sam remembers who he is yeah but when it comes to the evil leaper i think it wasn't that she volunteered to go i think she was either someone that was from death row that got plucked from that to be sent back in time to do her like time if that makes sense oh my god i know but the thing as well is like because she didn't volunteer she didn't want to be like responsible for mucking with time because she didn't want to change things but she had no choice so the first episode sam tries to help her but she ends up jumping before he can do anything they meet again and then it's like a two-part episode and the second half they both jump into the body of different women in a female's prison and the person that helps her out jumps into the warden's body of the prison to hunt her down to kill her yeah because apparently if she can be killed within someone else's body then she can't obviously jump back and she can't like keep running away okay in like the ridiculousness it does make sense of course but for whatever reason she somehow the baddie that got conned into being the bad leaper she yeah. sides with sam and at the very last minute she starts going blue instead of red so she's become good and leaps away but they never find her oh like, wow it's really really odd like owl says to sam like She's leaped away, she's safe, but we don't know where she's gone. So it's like, where? Where has she gone? <laughs> but the best thing of all, the one thing I love is that they did play off the idea of Al being a ghost, because there were a few episodes where people could see him. Not everyone could, but some people could. And it was really weird, because there was one woman that was a I think it was a black woman in Louisiana that was a psychic. Yeah. So for whatever reason, she was able to see Al, but she thought he was a ghost. Oh my because, god! Oh, because wow. the thing is, because the thing is with Al is that he is technically some sort of like weird projection thing that hones in on Sam's brain waves. That's yes. how he's able to communicate. But it's only Sam that should be able to see him. And they even say that it might be down to the fact that certain people have the same sort of brainwave frequency because that in itself, that's a uh, yeah, yeah. So, so is this like a fan theory which has come on after the fact? No, it was said in the series itself that they had to oh, readjust the frequency with Ziggy so they couldn't be seen because the problem was that like, some people could see him, yeah, but it's really trippy because. I mean, given the fact that this was like really early on CGI, they did it really well, like making him look like he was just not there but there at the same time. Yeah, like for his time, I actually like when I was looking at it, I actually thought it was it was quite cool the way it was done. But the thing as well is there are a few iffy things that it does make me cringe because it's just the aesthetic oh, of it didn't this, make a lot of sense. Oh, the iffiness. This was all going so well for the last 24 minutes. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be theorycraft if we didn't nitpick something now, would we? I so, it, ben. What do you got? Well, the design of the suit and the aesthetic as, as to <laughs> how yeah. he even enters the machine. This is from the opening episode. I just I wish I could find the, the actual like gift to explain it better. He's literally wearing a white morph suit and he's walking into blue flames and that is about it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But like, I think there was only one episode where Al actually speaks to the person that's actually swapped with him at the time. Yeah. I can't remember if it was the girl that was pregnant or somebody else, but I know it was a woman. Was it woman? No, no, I remember who it was now. Now, this is the weirdest fucky thing of all. Is he jumps into the younger body of Al. 
Oh. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, there's one episode where he jumps into the younger body of Al, where he's in Vietnam. So, yeah, it's a weird one because then Al's having a conversation with his younger self, how to stay alive in Vietnam. So he doesn't get caught or he doesn't like doesn't get killed. So he can go back to the girl that he wants to go back to. Oh, yeah, that makes complete sense, actually. But how trippy is that? Like, because the thing is, they say in the series that when they swap back, they shouldn't technically remember anything that happens. Exactly, yeah. But then in the end episode, all the people that they meet that they bring into the bar... They all explain about like the idea of seeing a bright blue light. The bright blue light being when Sam jumps into them. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a very trippy series. I love it to death. I will happily watch it on reruns if it ever comes back again on UK TV. But the idea of doing it for modern day, I don't know how it could work because there have been talks and whispers of the idea that it could come back. But at the same point, I don't know if it should. BM, what is the reason for that? Why? What, why do you think that? I think it's just because... With a lot of reboots or remakings of classic series, they always go for the doom and gloom. They don't have the same attitude as what the original series had. So the one thing they had as like the main thing for the series is that for every time he jumped into somebody, he would, it was from the first episode, he only ad-libbed it on the script, but they kept it in because it was such a like funny thing to say. He just goes, oh boy, every time he jumps into a new body. Mm. And it's just like, you wouldn't be able to do it that comical today because for most people, they just wouldn't find it that, funny because it's not a turn of phrase for today if that makes sense yeah i get that totally i get that but then the other thing as well is like it was very light-hearted despite the very dark episodes that i mentioned where like there's the evil leapers and there's lee harvey Os uh, lee harvey oswald and other things in between because he has jumped into the body of those of different race which is another I don't know if that would be possible either for modern day. Because while it is a good plot point, it's trying to do it without it being racist, which unfortunately these days you can't do due to the fact that everybody has to have something to complain about. Oh, yeah. Like even things which are not offensive in any way, shape, or form are yet somehow offensive now. Because like, we basically live in a world where people are wet blankets now. Of course. But the thing is, is that at the end of the day, I don't know... I don't know as whether or not to actually have it set, like, in the year as of, like, today, 2020, if the series were to start from today. Or whether to do it a bit further ahead like they did in the original series, but still cover the past 40 years... I don't know, because considering obviously the crap year the 2020's been, what if mm. like, you had a new premise? What if you kind of had a new premise for it of having it being set around about the same time as it is now, like in the middle of the worldwide situation to try and see, right, is there any work, like what can we do to maybe alter like the reality of 2020, stuff like that, but also... Uh, it's hard to like kind of recapture the magic of like those. Sometimes lightning doesn't always strike twice, and most of the time it doesn't. But this is it. I mean, <clears throat> I have a feeling it will get remade at some point, whether it be this year or next year, who knows. But the thing is, with a lot of projects, is that things are being remade not because of the fan base liking it. I think it's more in terms, yeah, exactly, cash grab. It's not because people can't come up with original ideas anymore. They just don't want to try and fail because they've seen when people try and fail and they get deterred from it. Well, I mean, yeah, that's why we're in, a very, we're in a very stark time at the minute because it just seems like we're getting reruns, repeats and redos. So I just, because at the minute it's kind of, we're in a bit of a sparse time where kind of is every, we spoke about this in many other videos, folks, but 
you know, wondering is every original cool idea already being done? Mm. You know, are we like, are we out of content basically? Well, this is it. I mean, I would love to see a modern interpretation of Quantum Leap, but I would oh, try yeah. to figure out would it be a scientific project in terms of seeing like how time travel would work, or would it be more the thing where someone had to go back in time because they were forced to because the whole premise is like i say with quantum leap the original series was it was sam's actual project but he couldn't wait for people to give him the go and that's why he went into the machine as himself because he wanted to prove it could work well i think you could i think you could do that but then again uh, the problem is with time travel is that time travel, no matter how right you try and do it for a film or series, it's always going to bring up more questions rather than answers. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, because there's obviously going to be, um, if maybe, obviously with time travel, we don't fully know if it, we don't know if it even exists. So I don't know, maybe it might, it might be an opportunity to possibly work with actual scientists and people who study this kind of things like gravity, space, time to try and, I don't know, make it a bit more of a cohesive kind of story so it makes the best sense it can. But it's time travel. Like, there's no point. Well, no, I mean, that's the thing, is time travel never makes sense fully because everyone's got their own interpretation until we actually have time travel in real life. But, I mean, let's say we were to have the series redone for modern day... What historic event in the modern era would you love to see seen, like, I would try to be altered for time travel or just mentioned in the series? To be honest, with, like, the thing I would want to see is, like, seeing where music would be today if John Lennon hadn't been assassinated. Yeah. I would yeah. love to see what would have happened, you know, with the Beatles, like, maybe they wouldn't still be going, but... What if the Beatles like still carried on like touring stuff like? What if the Beatles got back together like all that kind of stuff? How would it alter like our timeline and so on? Mm. I mean, for me, I would say I'd love to see the moral quandary over the idea of preventing nine eleven because it's the same sort of argument when it comes to the Quantum Leap episode with Lee Harvey Oswald. The fact that they could easily stop Sam shooting JFK because that's like a big mass event but at the same point like should you stop it because then how catastrophic how catastrophic there i can't even say it. how classic that's the word would it be if you were to change something that big because if you were to prevent something that big then how much of the world would be either intact or completely blown apart Considering that was like the whole spark for the whole world war, well, the world war with Iraq, and then it sort of fell flat from there. But it's one of those things that you have to ask yourself: Is it worth the risk? Uh, do you mean it? Like, if it is, it worth the risk because of like people being offended, like ethical reasons? Is that like kind of what you're going on? There's that as well, but it's also in the actual logic of time travel: Is it worth right, the risk? Yeah tempting to try and undo something so massive well mind you like getting onto the subject of like the whole like 9 11 and so on that in as horrible as it was and as tragic as it was if that in a way hadn't have happened that we wouldn't have had such secure and strict safety measures in airports as such and security as we have now exactly just, because the unfortunate bugger about history is that it takes a lot of bad stuff for things to get better, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And we've definitely got plenty of that this year. But... <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> but the thing is, is, like... I don't even think it would... I don't know if it's just me getting older, but I think that modern comedy is so iffy these days because it's so difficult to try and do something so casually funny like it was within the quantum leap series like there were minor jokes there was like tidbits between al and sam the idea of using it for modern day i don't know how well it would work because like i say with everything being made dark and gritty 
I don't know if there would be any lightheartedness because that was probably one of the key aspects of the entire series was that, yes, it was serious, but it took a light approach to it as well. Yeah, for sure, yeah. But I can't really think of much else to say today. What about you? Uh, no, not particularly, but I do have one final question, though. Mm -hmm. When it comes to quantum leap, you know, obviously, with like having to, like, your consciousness jumping into the body of another person. Mm hmm what happens to that person's consciousness? Well, they swap with Sam. Like they literally like. Right, so like so like Sam swaps with this person, then this body goes. Yeah. This person's consciousness goes to yeah. Sam's spot. Yes. So they oh, basically. God, so, how, so, but what's like the body of Sam doing in that time? Well, there because Sam's still in the lab where he walked into to like go into the quantum leap machine. So that means like Al's gonna have to like just be chatting with this. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a really iffy one. It's a very. That's why I find it a very bizarre series because, like I say, when they jump back, they don't always remember the conversations that they've had with Al or the experience being out of their body. Yeah, because like to them, it could have just been a fleeting dream or something, or just a daydream. Exactly. This is it. But do you have anything to say, Boris? Subscribe to Theorycraft and click bell icon so Boris can buy more vodka. Oh god, we got an alcoholic in the group. Anyway. You're, no, you're a good boy, alright? But listen, we can't we gotta talk about the virgin in drinking problem, okay? It's getting out of hand. Like I know you that's just like I know vodka's just staple in Russia, but we don't that's not how we do things in this household. This is a dry household, you drink coffee. Yeah, yeah, well, Hopefully, he'll be feeling better by next week. As you can tell with his giant sunglasses, he's been a bit delicate today. He might have hit it a bit too hard last night. But there we go, folks. This has been a brief episode of me ranting about a very obscure but brilliant series about America's attempt at time travel. What's for next week's episode, dude? Uh, next week's episode is one which, as... I've sort of just fallen in love with it again. Uh, one of my absolute heroes from my childhood, who I've had the pleasure to meet a few times before he passed away. But next week is going to be on one of my favourite puppet shows, quite literally a puppet show, and it's not Thunderbirds, it's Captain Scarlet. If you've never seen Captain Scarlet, I'm probably going to do a video this week, just explain maybe some quick five facts and just things about Captain Scarlet. I love it to me. Sorry, it's better than Thunderbirds. Shoot me if you want to. But yeah, it's going to be on Captain Scarlet. And if you don't know much about it, then I'm probably going to sort that out for you in the week with a singular video and for uh, the live stream for next week. Okay, doke. So that's Jack's topic for next week is Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. So thanks again for joining us. It's not much of an episode because, well, we didn't really have much to say other than it was just obscure, weird, and bonkers, just like us. So, thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time. Bye!